<laughs> I, I was just telling her that I literally one Sunday I binge watched her content for three hours like I was on Netflix. I had my Oral Redenbacher extra butter popcorn. <laughs> and I'm like this. Word? What? I'm just going in, right? I'm, I was so intrigued. And then like, next thing I know, an hour and a half in, I'm meditating. I'm like saying, Usa, like I'm Whitney Houston. Like, I, I just hit me. Or you know I'm like, I'm there. I'm in it. That's how good her content is. Not only that, she is the queen. I repeat, she is the queen of book profiting. She did a video. She did a live webinar on Instagram. Uh, she was streaming live on Instagram and Facebook. And she gave me this simple hack um, on some DM stuff, right? I never thought about this. I never thought about doing it. Like almost immediately, I started profiting from that little hack that you taught about the DM with the book. And I was like, oh, no, oh, no, we got to get her on the show for sure, for sure. So, Miss Taria, please introduce yourself. And I thank you humbly as well for being on the show. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. I, I'm trying to find the live stream so I can see if people are commenting. So I can't find it. Okay. Um, Let me see if I have, I can tag you on here again. The Rhea Vision Avant. So it's the picture where I'm, you know, I'm like this with the black shirt. Yeah. Yeah. No question. With the dope hat on, the one that I have right here, right? No, that's not, that's not the. Oh, uh, it's a different one. Yeah. I'm trying to find. Oh, but oh, you did. That's the one you did. But if you did it with the dope hat, I can probably find it. Okay. Yeah, I did the Tarita okay. vision of us. Okay, perfect, perfect. Well, anyways, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. And I am so excited to be here. Uh, listen, you know, like you said, Chicago was a dope event. So, you know, I was definitely grateful to be there with Mr. Will Roundtree or King Will Roundtree. And, uh, you know, I love what I do. Um, I absolutely love what I do. So long story short, a little bit about me. I'm originally from Virginia. Hampton, Virginia, uh, went to Hampton University. So shout out to all HBCUs that are watching. What's up? And uh, my background is actually, well, I went to school for technology. I won't necessarily say that's my background, but I am a big techie. Like I love gadgets and all types of stuff. I'm the girl where like purses and shoes are not that exciting for me. It's a new gadget. Like I like a new <laughs> camera or, you know, I'm just weirdo. Like you should see my setup right now. It's crazy, right? Um, and with me being such a techie, which many techies are, I'm also pretty introverted. And a lot of times people say, well, dog, you know, I can't even imagine you're introverted because all the videos and all the speaking that you do. Um, but I've just learned how to create that alter ego. Because one thing about me, Tiger, is that when, you know, when I was introverted and I let that be an excuse to not, you know, stand out and do all the things that I've been called to do, I was broke. And so being an introvert and not using my my skill sets, I was, it was leaving me in a broke place. And so I learned how to create this alter ego where when needed, I would be able to use my voice to impact the masses. And so um, where my life really changed, and I always like to share this story, but I... I yeah, as please I, do. Yeah, as I stated, I was, I, I'm originally from Virginia. And um, in the process of graduating from Hampton, I had always tried all these different businesses. I was a professional tripreneur. I tried everything under the sun. And I like to say try because I never gave it my all. In fact, I don't even like to use the word try today because I feel like when you say try, it gives you an excuse. So if it don't work, you can say, well, I tried when you know that your ass ain't really tried. Hello, somebody. Okay, excuse my language. And so I would try everything. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days max is what I would give it. And if it didn't work, but I never really worked it, I would quit it. Well, eventually I stopped trying stuff and I just would go to work every day. And, and I mean, this is with the bachelor's in computer science, barely making it. I had a pray car and, you know, times were tough. And so it wasn't until I got that call that my father, who was my last living blood parent, I was going into the hospital. My mom passed when I was 11 years old due to cirrhosis of the liver. And so if anybody knows what that is, you know what the lifestyle was like coming up. And now I got my father who I've seen overcome the, many of those challenges that my mom wasn't able to. And they telling me he's going to the hospital. Well, long story short, seven months later, he had passed away from cancer, from lung cancer. And that was probably one of the most difficult times in my life. Um, however, it's crazy because my father 
um, going through that challenge and actually now becoming my forever angel is also what propelled me to stop playing around. And a lot of times it's in those setbacks that we have in our lives that really actually change our lives forever. And unfortunately, I wish we didn't wait for the setbacks. Like I yeah. wish we didn't wait, you know what I mean? Because everything that I've ever desired to do, it was always in me. It's just, that was kind of like that push. And so when he passed away, I moved to Atlanta to start my journey of entrepreneurship, was here for you know 10 years. And um, then in 2014, prior to moving, I started my journey of teaching people how to write books. I have a long story of that, but I'm not gonna get into all of that. I first started helping people write books and then I learned that a lot of authors out here are not making no money. In fact, 80% of most authors make less than $10,000 a year. So yes, well, I could have just been like any other book coach and no shade, no tea to nobody out here that's helping to produce books. I didn't want to just do that. Like I didn't just want to help someone write a book. I want to show authors how to turn that book into a tool and make multiple streams of income. So that's my mission now is to help authors and future authors have books and leverage them to build multiple streams of income, which is why I am the queen of book profiting. That's a fact, you guys. Let me let me share this. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. I, I got I I had to get her books. Her this one is fire. Thank you. For real. Fire. <laughs> fire. Thank you. And so then much. not on top of that, you did something so unique. You put in a gold hundred. I, I can't even express to you how, how I felt when I got that. It it put me in a whole different like realm. I was like, wow, this is unique. This is like this is something that I didn't expect. I was expecting, you know, I get the book and then, you know, I'm gonna read it. I'm a dog ear it highlight and stuff like that. But that golden $100 bill just like really did something for me there. Well, so it where I've seen a lot of people put out books before. Um, I, I have a few books out myself, but I've never seen anyone deliver books the way you have. Like, mm -hmm. where did that come from? Like this is it, because your style is very unorthodox, hands yeah. down, nobody doing what you do. Mm -hmm. Well, shoot, where did it come from? I, Jesus. Okay. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, that's first and foremost. Um, but I've always wanted to be the person to stand out. And also, let me just say, I was always the one that would like kind of go against the grain, never wanted to fit in. I always felt, and, I, and actually, I was told by a mentor that if you're doing what everybody else is doing, nine times out of 10, you're going to probably end up where everybody else is ending up. So you got to pay attention to the few that are willing to go the other way. And so like, I didn't want to do, I see a lot of authors. I know a lot of people are birthing books, but I know that the, the last time I ever see them talking about their books is when they launch. And so I said, well, how can I separate myself from that? And also, this is a funny thing. I never wrote a book because I wanted to sell a book. Okay. Never wrote a book. So I think the reason why it has helped me tremendously is because initially, I wrote the book because I used to be in network marketing. I was top income earner in the industry. I wrote the book so people would respect me. Mm. Period, point blank. So what, let me tell you the story. So what happened was at the time, what had happened was at the time I had made, you know, I was making a great income in the network marketing industry, multiple six figures a year. And what happened was I, I, this dude I had just met when I moved to Atlanta, I'm like going back because, you know, I'm getting money now. So I'm like, yeah. well, let me go hit up people that I met when I first got here, you know, lawyers and doctors and stuff like that. So I hit up this dude who was a lawyer and um, I was like, yo, let's do lunch, my treat, you know, I'm gonna take you out. Let's see what's going on, see what each other are doing. So he goes and tells me, you know, he, when we go to lunch, he's like, yeah, I just got engaged. He's like, um, just made partner in my law firm. Just, I mean, things are going great for him, right? And so he's like, so tell me what's going on with you. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm ready. I was like, yeah, so I sell some coffee. I sell this coffee. He was like, what? You got your own coffee business? I was like, well, no, I'm a um, distributor with this company. 
And I've been able to, you know, do some really great things with the product and also with the organization. And so you, y'all, you would have thought I told that man I sell illegal narcotics because, honey, he did not want to talk to me no more. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I know he's not trying to not respect me when I know no shade. I'm probably making more money to him. Listen, I'm not one of them type people that, that like to throw my money at people's face. So I was just like, oh, he's trying to play me. But like I'm making real money. And what I had come to learn is that there's still a large population of people who don't see network marketing as real business. Mm -hmm. And so I can't be upset because most people have never earned the kind of income that I had. And also the ones who ain't never tried it got a negative kind of or negative connection, even if they never tried it. Oh, I heard that was a scheme. You know, everybody yeah. loves to follow negativity. Yeah. And yeah. so I said, okay, well, how can I get people to respect me? Because the only place in life I've ever had success in business is network marketing. So I wrote the book, the very first book that won um, a six figure vision. It used to be called a vision of freedom. Mm -hmm. I wrote that book. And when I tell you the doors was opening up and that's when it clicked for me. So like when I say doors were opening up, like I'm getting invited to speak in organizations, they never wanted me to come speak because, you know, network work, networkers, you know, most networkers that make a good income, they be like hawks. Honey, okay. when you speak to them, they don't know nothing about what you're talking about. They're not listening to you. They're just trying to recruit you into the company. That's how they act. They act like hawks. That's how I used, I used to be like, stop acting like a hawk. You know how a hawk, when he goes to get his prey, he just ah, clams yeah. down. To get. That's how they were acting. And so I, I never acted like that, though. But I just knew that was the mentality in the industry. So I used the book to kind of get me in the door in different places. People didn't know what business I was in. And so um, ever since then, because I never wrote a book to initially sell it, I wrote it to get respect. I wrote wow. it to get speaking gigs. I wrote it so that I could recruit more people. So since that day, I've always probably given away more books than I've actually sold them. Or I, I undersell them because it ain't about the book sale. And by the way, I always tell people book sell money or book money is no money. It's not the money that you make from the book. It's how you leverage the book that gets you the bag. And that's what people have to understand. So would you say like when when you wrote your book, it opened doors to like maybe a, like an intellectual crowd or something? Like, did you notice that you were attracting a whole different tier of type of people since you wrote your book? No, it's not even that it was a more intellectual crowd. It was just that, oh, this girl's talking about freedom. <laughs> this girl's talking about six figures. She must know what she talked about because she wrote a book about it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it gives you credibility in a space because even though, yes, I guess you can consider a doctor to be more intellectual, but I had pastors and bishops and all types of intellectual people that were in my network marketing company. It's just they were not open to the industry. So me having that book, it gave them a little bit more confirmation, like, okay, you're a professional. And then another thing is that most people like, and this is no disrespect to anybody that has gone to school to get a doctorate, but like most people will put an author based on the title that you write about right like say you write a book about how to you know find the best relationship of your life people will put you on the same category as other like doctor professionals in the relationship world i don't even know if you could get a doctorate in relationships but you know what i'm saying yes like, i wrote a book about depression which by the way i realized that talking about depression in that way even though it is a part of my purpose to help people with balance, but I'm not trying to be a life coach. So, so that wasn't my ministry, but mm -hmm. I wrote a book about depression and I was on a panel with doctors. Like, yeah. like when I tell you, they was over here using words I ain't never heard of. And they got to me, they said, well, well what, what do you recommend with somebody do when they get through the I was like, well, listen, I know that y'all doctors, I don't know what none of that means, but let me tell you what I did. And at the end of the event, everybody was waiting in line with the girl who had a book about depression, not the people who went to school to give you all the technical terms and stuff like that that they can't relate to. Now you, like I said, you're, you're multi-dimensional when it comes to your content. You were bringing some very hard topics, mm -hmm. like, like the depression part, which yeah. doesn't, is, is, in the black community, that's not s spoken about at all. Matter of fact, like, I think we're still trying to get over like, oh, you go see a therapist or you go see a shrink or whatever the case is. And it, it, it's poked at, it's made fun at, right? Yeah. When we are 
going through a lot of trauma. Like, what what gave you the the strength to actually start bringing that to the forefront? Because you're very transparent, yeah. and you let people know what's going on. Like, whether they like it, whether they don't like it, this is what it is. Yeah. How, where'd that come from? Well, my father, um, who was like my hero, mm -hmm. um, when when before he got diagnosed with cancer, he also had to have open heart surgery, okay. which, by the way, in our community is one of the number one causes of death, right? Heart, heart problems. And the reason why he had to have a heart valve replaced is I don't, you know, they never told me, but I believe it's because my father never shared what he was going through. Mm. While people don't believe that that is, that can affect you. It does. Holding stuff in creates tension in your body. It creates uh, stresses. It creates anxieties. And so it is the anxiety that can lead to the depression, which then can cause ailments, physical ailments in your body. And so I remember him having to have that surgery and it was horrible. Like that surgery, we, oh my God, it was horrible. Then moving forward, I was finding myself getting to that place where I wasn't really sharing. And it wasn't until it was, in, in fact, I'll tell you, I had did, this, I was, a, I was um, a, a top income earner um, in the company. And I'd, I've shared this before on like a smaller platform. I don't know if I've ever shared this like publicly to all social media, I'm not sure. Um, but I was in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, mind you, in this company that I was in, I had worked myself to the bone. I mean, I would be in six different states in just one month grinding on calls all day long losing friends not seeing my family lost my grandmother during all of this because i was so busy i didn't want i didn't have time to go see her i knew i would be able to see her eventually and then through the midst of all that losing her and losing a friend you know one of my good girlfriends she passed away and so i'm at this conference in las vegas and now i did share this portion but i'm trying to figure out ways that i can no longer be here okay and in that process, um, I remember reaching out to one of the leaders and letting them know, I don't want to be here anymore, like in this world. Mm -hmm. And they did not respond back. And so the next day, and, and I won't even go into detail why I didn't make a decision, just know that every single way that was guaranteed, I was too afraid. To okay. Take so when I go to the conference the next day, which by the way, I had worked so hard in this company and my income had dropped so much um, that I couldn't even afford to stay in the host hotel. But at the same time, I got to get in front of these people and tell everybody this is the number one lifestyle in the world. And it was yeah. nice. And um, I remember them seeing me at the conference and I had to put on, you know, you had to put on face. Yeah. And, and they, they asked me, are you back? I thought that was so disrespectful. Am I back? And so, oh, oh, you think I'm playing? Oh, I'm out here showing people one life when ultimately that's not the truth. Mm. And I felt like a hypocrite. And the last thing I ever want to be is a woman when it's all said and done known for lying to people. And so it was one, I was in my high rise in, in I lived in a, another high rise in Atlanta. And I had watched this movie of this little boy who identified as a girl. And he had did this little flashcard video thing. And I said, and you know, God said, do that. And so if you go to YouTube and you search Taria Avant depression, you'll see that video. And I did this flashcard. That was the first time I ever had shared like all of what was going on with me. And so I did that flashcard and I cut off my phone. And I didn't really know how crazy it would be, but the next day it was like, when I turned my phone, it was like, ding, 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 ding. I had so many people messaging me like, <laughs> yo, I'm going through depression. Oh my God, this is what's happening to me. And ever since that day, that's when I understood. And that's also when I had really identified my purpose here see sometimes for our people we don't listen to nobody unless we feel like well, are you are, did you earn or qual are you qualified to talk to me yeah. so yes where i help people make money please only only understand that's only 10 percent of the purpose of me being here i, I y'all wouldn't listen to me if i really wasn't helping nobody make no money i'm just gonna be transparent I, so I, I and, 
You know what I mean? So in where I'm helping everybody write the books and make the money and leveraging, I have a bigger purpose in my life. Yes. And that's where I show people, yes, making money, but also having a balance in mind, body and soul. So from that day, it became almost addictive to be able to see where people were like, yo, I never would have expected. I thought your life was perfect. And I'm over here looking at myself and thinking this is bad and et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like because I was willing to be honest, who knows, I might have saved some souls. And, and you know, I don't know specifically, nobody has ever messaged me and said, because of that video, I made a decision not to, but I'm a big believer that because I was willing to share that there are people today who are pushing through and they're excelling in life in ways that maybe they would not have been. So. Well, shit, let me be the first one to say it then. You helped me out with one of your videos. Thank you. That, that day I was doing the binge watching, I was, experiencing a lot of anxiety you know uh you know being that full-time entrepreneur which a lot of people don't see there's a lot that goes into it yeah. and you know there was there would be one video you talk about entrepreneurship then you would be like like this is a process like so i was getting a panic attack high anxiety mm. heart is like just murmuring like Rrr. i'm like oh my god i need to relax somehow and it was your videos that got me like into a steady place and be like oh, okay breathe relax it's gonna be okay this you you that's why i said like ladies and gentlemen that's why i binge watch her stuff it's it's addicting she one i feel like she's talking directly to me right um your communication skill is on off the charts but i feel like she's talking to me she talks in a vernacular that i understand like i mean she she be doing the latest TikTok dances too y'all <laughs> and i love to dance. you know we love to dance so, or watch people dance i don't know why people love them dancing videos but <laughs> yo you be tearing it up i see <laughs> you was in front of that elevator and then you did the walk away when you was like cat 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 yeah, i'm I like yo oh, hang it up i'm out i'm gone i'm gone so so it's so refreshing it's so i i don't i don't see that anywhere throughout the whole internet and i'm on facebook instagram youtube your content is like just on its own its own platform and um can we talk a little bit about the the entrepreneurial mindset mm -hmm. uh because we have a lot of entrepreneurs uh and while you guys are on here, shout out your city and state, please. Um, I know we got Oakland in the building. Uh, Los Angeles is definitely in the house. Um, Albuquerque is is definitely here. So we have people all over the place. We got Virginia. Hey, we got somebody from Virginia, all right, hey. Enrico. So shout shout out the VA. What can you say? Like I I I do think I think the last video I saw you put out you were talking about people got it social media got you thinking entrepreneur is this way and it's not <laughs> um <laughs> what can you tell people like what can they expect because we have a lot of new entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs that are have that side hustle and they they're looking into making it the main hustle now what can they expect as an entrepreneur the raw and uncut truth Okay, so I was gonna say, because how deep you want me to yeah, go? Yeah, go all, I mean, just raw, never stepped on cocaine level. <laughs> Fresh, <laughs> hard rock. Okay. Fresh. Um, well, first of all, let me tell you, if I could do this, our community is highly affected to the addiction to work. And I, I actually shared this in my TED talk, but I, listen, I'm gonna do side note. They messed up the title, so when I get she, brought she, in, she to flexing y'all TED talk. Oh, just a little, like, yeah, just a little. Like just flex. Drop my collar. That's right. Bing. Yeah. Dust your yeah. shoulders off. <laughs> now, in my TED talk, they titled it wrong, but um, it was really all about our dick, like how in the urban community, how we're addicted to our own labor, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you how it translates to business, because this is why we don't be having no, this why I don't have no success. So. When you think about it, if you come up from the hood or you come up in an urban community, the person that we would talk the best about would be the one who had like multiple jobs. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, you know, Joanne or John, they got three jobs like they be hustling. Right. And, and you know, in, in our in our community, hustle is not ne necessarily a negative word. 
It's just yeah. like this person goes and gets the money. And so we're taught that in order to make more money, because most of us ain't educated, we got to go work three, four jobs, whatever it takes to get the bag. Now, what happens, though, is that same mentality translates over into our businesses. So we're like, OK, I'm going to start a business. And then we always listen to broke people who be talking about what well, the average millionaire has seven streams of income. Please go talk to the millionaire before you start listening to broke people telling you about how millionaires make their money. Because yes, millionaires do make money in multiple streams, but uh, about uh, six of them streams are passive. They, it means that they don't have to work in them streams. So what we do is now we, we used to work in three and four jobs. So what do we do? We go and we start three and four businesses. Okay. So like we'll start a real estate business. Then we also going to go over here and do some hair. And then I'm also going to sell waist trainers because, you know, I might as well. Right now, you're trying to build up all these different businesses and all these different brands, and we are overworked and underpaid. So the key here, first of all, when it comes to entrepreneurship, and by the way, stop getting so, like, we get addicted to different titles. Well, you know, I got this business or addicted to names and, you know, like, the, oh, well, this is the name of my company and this is what I registered. And y'all, we got to get addicted to results, Okay. It's the results that we're called to actually be here to do. Like if you can help solve a problem and sometimes the solving is just one business. You don't need to have multiple businesses, right? So the first thing that I'm gonna encourage us, if we wanna be successful as entrepreneurs, you gotta figure out the one thing. Get that one thing, and I'm going to really be serious here. Get it to over six figures. Do you know the number of businesses that actually get to six figures is less than 3% of businesses out here? And every single day, businesses are getting started. So we out here running multiple businesses, out here telling false truths about we need to have seven streams, but what you're really teaching is seven businesses. Streams are different. Okay, so first figure out what's going to be the one business that you can do or really the one result for me, my business is yes, I help people to write books and profit and you know publish I mean perform and all that stuff right with the books, but that's just the, the business itself the result is I help people get money. So the first question is what is the result that you want to help people with and then figure out one product one service that you can grow to six figures because this is the thing if you're trying to do all these different things that require your time that means you cannot be a master of them i want y'all to think about it like this if you had to have brain surgery because there was a, a mass in your brain and you needed it removed let's just say you go sit down and you sitting down with the brain surgeon and you happen to look up and see that he also specializes in the heart he got a little bit of cosmetic surgery experience too, and he know how to fix your toes. How comfortable are you gonna feel with this brain surgeon opening up your brain for this life-threatening surgery? You're gonna be like, uh-uh, hold up, Ninja. <laughs> You're not about to be operating on my brain. Well, this is how we gotta treat our businesses, y'all. So we gotta figure out the one business. The second thing is you got to be connected to people who are having success. Now, this is another thing that hurts our community as well. Mm. We feel like we are the end all be all. Can't, I can't work with nobody that do what I do. You can, I can't be around. I can't get nobody no tips. Um, Y'all, it's billions of people. And the last time I checked, we served a God who is a God of abundance, not a God of lack. Why would he give you vision to do a business and say, but you can't work with nobody else. If you do, if you work with somebody else who does what you do, you're not going to have success. I wish we didn't have that mentality, but we have to think about our ancestors. In order to survive, we had to be number one. In order to oh. be able to, to, you know what I'm saying? Like we, we couldn't be like equally okay. Somebody had to be number one, but we've got to change that mentality. And so you got to find a mentor. You got to find someone who's willing to pour back into you. And sometimes in those mentorships, it may require money or it may require you offering in exchange of learning something for them. So a lot of times we out here got our hand out, y'all. We like, well, I need you to mentor me, but I ain't got no money. I ain't got no time. I ain't got no experience, but you want someone who is having a level of success and what it is that you want to do, just give it all up freely. You got to come to the table with something as well. See, back in the day, Tiger, there used to be a thing before we had money, we would exchange value for value. 
You understand what I'm saying? So before we have paper money and credit cards and coins and stuff, if somebody wanted some goat meat, they would have to exchange some chicken or something like that. Yeah. Or if you wanted some rice, you would have to exchange some some beans and stuff. Right. And so you should look at every single exchange that you have today as the same thing, value for value. And so we got to make sure that number one, we figured out what we want to do. We want to now get a mentor. And then you can't let people who not doing what you do throw you off. Mm. I mean, I could give you so many tips today, to be quite honest, but that right there was very, very pivotal for me. I don't seek advice from people who are not doing what I want to do. Now, doesn't mean that I don't compartmentalize my relationships. I have some really great friends in my life. They're friends though. They're not clients, they're not customers. And I don't get mad if they don't buy my books or come to my events because God has ordained and assigned them to be my friends. I have people who are assigned to be clients, customers, members, et cetera, that I'm supposed to help. That's who they are. But also if, some, if one of my friends who does not have the vision of what God gave me, doesn't necessarily agree with my business, I'm not gonna be taking no advice from them. I'm not gonna even talk to them about business. I'm not gonna ask them any opinions. I've just really learned how to compartmentalize my life so that I can still have people where I can let my hair down with, but also I have people that can pour into me who have had the level of success that I want. I mean, we could talk oh, all day about this. Oh, I mean, uh, look, I, I've already shed my skin on this one. Mm -hmm. Like I'm already a new person advancing in this world just off of those bars you just dropped. Oh, hold on, let me take that in for a second. Yeah, hey, you guys, <laughs> put in your questions in the chat. Look, you guys have Taria Avant here live right now. If you guys have questions, drop them in the chat. Uh, we have somebody from California that said, uh, where can we find your TED Talk? If you go to the TEDx website or if you go to the TEDx YouTube, you can just search my name, Taria Avant, and it will pull up. It'll pull up there. Um, also, we have Miss Notary Coach Consultant say, how can you be her coach? Oh, well, very good question. So I have a simple system. And I also want to share this for anybody that wants to get into the coaching space. So one of the things that I did, I know you didn't ask me all of this, but I'm going to teach you all of this as well. Teach, uh, throw, throw, throw the kitten caboodle in it. It's yeah, your show. You. Yeah, it's the teacher. Avant show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me get comfortable. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, so um, when, when you wanna get into coaching guys, you gotta create a system, okay? That allows you to be able to impact the masses in a way that you can do it where it doesn't, it's not as time constrained. Does that make sense? Mm. So um, I have a system in place. And so a lot of times people will even say something like, for example, and I'm not saying that anybody said this, hey, can I get your number so I can call you and maybe, nope. I don't give none of my coaching clients my phone number, okay? Mm. Also, I don't have you just to reach out to me randomly. I have a system where people can go find out the information up front, which is my free masterclass. So I send everyone that's possibly interested in working with me to my masterclass. And this is the thing, if you don't want to do that, like if you're saying, well, I don't really want to go to the mat, I just want to work with you one on one, I just want to talk to you. Okay, well, then you're not my person because I have a system that allows me to have freedom, but at the same time, to impact so many more people. So the first way that if you if you are interested in learning more about writing a book, okay, that's what I do. Or if you're already an author and you wanna learn how to turn that book into multiple streams, then you wanna go to 10kbook.com. And that is the number 10, 10 kbook, because my goal this year is to help more than 1,000 authors earn over $10,000 a month with their books. Now, let's just say, for example, somebody's like, well, listen, I don't really need a book, but I want to know, can you coach me in a different area? No. Remember what I said at the beginning, the challenge that we have is that we're addicted to our own labor. And I used to do this. I call it a la carte in your business. I was Miss <laughs> a la carte queen. If you want to meet it, can you just help me with some public speaking? Yeah, I got you. Can you help me with putting together my event? Yeah, I got you. And guess what was happening to your girl? I was charging all these little low things because I didn't have an expertise, shall we say. I was just kind of generalist and I was doing all these things. I w it was so bad when people would get on a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. I'd be like, now what program are you enrolled into? <laughs> I had so many doggone dang on programs and so wow. 
and I was overworked. Yes, I was making six figures, but I was overworked, stressed out and underpaid. It wasn't until I said, I ain't doing all this other stuff. I'm only focusing on helping authors or future authors write the right book with my book camp. And if they already have the right book, right? Then, then I teach them about promoting, profiting and performance. If somebody is not in that realm and they don't need those services, then guess what I've also done? I've created strategic partnerships with other coaches that help on public speaking, other coaches that help on client attraction, other coaches or uh, or people that help with business credit, right? I have different people where it's like, well, listen, I'm not for you, but what I can do is connect you to someone else. Now we've got partnerships and guess what? Taria only has to focus on books and I'm still able to have more free time and I can become the best. Like literally, I'm about to have my foot on the necks of anybody who try to act like they didn't want to pop. Oh, never mind. Let me stop being Lord Jesus. He working on me. Okay, but no. <laughs> she about to go in. Ah, <laughs> uh-uh, because you don't believe it. I was trying to find other book publishers because I I have I have ads that go out and I get hundreds of leads. And so sometimes people are like, well, I want to do a children's book. I don't do children's books. I'm very niched in the audience that I serve. Or I want to do a memoir. I don't do memoirs. And so I was like, listen, I want to partner with other people. I want to find people that do journals. I want to find people to do this, right? And so while I had some people that were like, yeah, okay, I want to do it. A lot of people, believe it or not, that are kind of doing it in that space, they won't interest it. So guess what your girl did? I created the Elite Publishers University where don't worry about it. I'm going to teach people how to do those specific genres. And so I don't got to send them to you. We can keep it all within the family. And so I'm I'm building a group called the Elite Publishers Group. Um, so that's another thing that we're doing too. We about, we about to dominate. Look. I'm about to die. Listen, where the microphone? So I, where's the little, I need to get, you know. Yeah, I mean? yeah, you need a microphone just to drop the shit. Just drop it. Drop that joint. No, man. Because <laughs> y'all not going to play with me in these streets. No. <laughs> we outside. <laughs> we outside. <laughs> Yo, oh, my God. This, I had too much fun. I, I, I knew I knew it was going to be lit and off the chain. I knew it. I knew it. you was going to bring that heat. Um, oh my gosh, like, I'm gonna have to play this over and over again, just so I could just like absorb all that stuff. Absolutely. Whew. Now you have an event coming up September 18th. Yes. So September Talk about 18th, that. that is my once a month virtual event is a mastermind. It's called our, it's called our book profits mastermind. So a lot of times I send people to the masterclass, which is the 30 minute, just to give you a little taste. You know what I'm saying? That's like the little appetizer. Okay. It, then you got it's a great book. appetizer. Oh, I, I took you. it. Thank you, thank you. And then I have the mastermind, which is a six hour event. It's the one, I call it a one day, but it's like a six hour event. In fact, this particular month, I have a, we do a bonus training every month. I got a young lady who works for LinkedIn. When I tell you this girl is dynamic. So she's gonna start the training off with everybody. She's gonna kill it. And then we're gonna go into deeper discussions. Um, I like to have conversations with people that already have their book and talk about some of the challenges that many authors have while they don't sell. But this is beneficial to people who are working or want to work on a book. I also talk about their 10K and 90 day game plan, okay? So we go over literally teaching you guys how to set up the game plan to get to $10,000 a month. I told you, one th- I wanna have 1,000 authors. So we do this training every month because sometimes it's repetitious information. It doesn't click always for the first time. That's true. And, and then I talk to you guys about how you can actually get started with our next book camp. By the way, just because you already got a book don't mean you don't need the book camp because some people have written books, but you don't write them the way that we do it. Okay, I just want you, I'm being very transparent and I sound a little cocky here, but I know for a fact, most authors don't write their books set up to sell. Yeah. What I mean by sell, I'm not talking about the book selling itself. I'm talking about you selling yourself. 
in the book, right? So uh, we go through a lot of that, but yeah, so it's a, it's a full day event, Book Profits Mastermind. You could actually register for free, but I always recommend upgrade to VIP, which is the $97 ticket, because when you upgrade to VIP, you get the replay, you get some bonuses, like template designs, like all types of stuff. Every month I'm throwing in some additional bonuses. Um, and so that's what I would recommend for everybody. And, and, and if you want to know about it first, I just recommend going to 10kbook.com. I'll so I put uh, 10kbook.com. You guys can go ahead and click that link. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put it in there again so you can find it. Thank I hope you. you, I know you guys got tremendous value. Heck, I'll be completely selfish on this one. Shit, I got a whole lot of value out of this. So <laughs> too bad if you guys didn't, but I, I, I absolutely. So what can we look forward to with Taria Avant in the near future? Um, well, some of the things definitely I'm super excited about this elite publishers group. Um, I know that this is going to shake up the world uh, tremendously and, and, and what it's going to shake up the world is going to teach our people that we can work together. I just have a I, listen, I've been trying to do it. I'm sorry, not trying because I don't believe in the word try. I've been cultivating this type of thing for a long time, just speaking about collaboration and not competition. Uh, for a long time and it doesn't always work and y'all I want y'all to know I've 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 bumped my head several times creating these types of you know collaborative opportunities, but I'm just a, belie a believer I mean shoot look what look what I mean and then not to get very preachy on y'all but look what Jesus did with 12 people. So I believe that if I can get a dope group of people together we can make some major things happen so i'm really excited about that I also have a nonprofit called urban CEO. And urban actually stands for unapologetic, real, bold, action oriented and non conforming. And I know that you had said something about like my language. I keep it very simple and that's on purpose, y'all, because one thing I do understand. First of all, if you look at other communities, they're not out here trying to use all these extremely deep, deep conversational words and stuff. Everything is simple. Majority of most people are we're simple, right? We're not as deep as we need to be. And so I like to cre create conversations so that anybody can understand. But one of the things that I found, because I was only in corporate for one year of my life, and I don't even know if you call it corporate, I just had a salary. But I don't, I don't understand a lot. Of, I don't understand a lot of the terminology. <laughs> so when I was trying to <laughs> launch these businesses, I didn't nobody think about it. We're not taught how to start a business. We're not taught right. to get an LLC and get business bank accounts and all these we're not taught these things we don't know what a sop is we don't know what a board is and so i remember going to like to some of these events where it's like okay i'm making six figures it's time to scale and i would sit here and they're like yeah you need to get your women's registration or whatever these certifications are and all this stuff and i'm like <laughs> and i don't want to look stupid because i mean you know i'm over here making a decent income so i must know what i'm doing I would just be like, mm, you know what, never mind. Let me just go back to doing what I do. And that's rolling up my sleeves and getting out here in these streets and grinding. Mm. But the truth is, y'all, we don't we don't have to work so hard if we understand the government be trying to throw us money. Mm. It's like we want to give you this money, but we yeah. don't know what's available. So urban CEO is supposed to be that bridge between the urban community because what you know and I call it we want to help you know how you got churches that say we want to help the unchurched get church well we want to help the unconference get conferenced and so we create environments where like yeah we might have a corporate person come and talking about funding but if you don't understand it don't worry I got you um excuse me ma'am we don't know what SOP means can you please yeah. break it down for us and explain or career okay you want to climb the corporate ladder man we need to know how do we go and appropriately talk to a boss about getting the race because nobody teaches you that and not even in college relationships how can we build better relationships in the urban community so yeah like what i'm looking forward to is definitely urban ceo growing of course our book camps continue to be great 100 success rate everyone who has ever been to our book camp has completed a book um i'm just excited and, and you're I global too yeah, uh, listen, 95% of my clients I've never physically met. They all over the world. And all so, over the world. All over Trinidad, the world, Trinidad, Tobago, Ghana. I, I see it. I see it. Yeah. La ladies and goodness. gentlemen, she is glo she is internationally known. You better know it. Holla. <laughs> and not only not only that, I'm gonna let you guys know right now. 
her streamline and automation is is bar none one of the best. <laughs> like like your tech your text goes out like like clockwork. Your email marketing fleek copywriting. I'm like, oh my god! It, Thank you. You guys can learn so much like over and over and over again just by the little bit of stuff that she uh, said on the show today. So if you can uh, position yourself to get her as a coach or log into one of her master classes program, do that. It's money well invested. Trust me. Or you could go to college and spend $100,000 and then hopefully that degree is worth something four years later. I need my money back. Yeah. No, <laughs> you get a quick ROI with, with the real for sure. <laughs> Any last words, my dear queen? Thank you so much for gracing the Notary War Room Queen Edition too. You're, you're like, you were perfect for this. Aww. So I wanted to definitely give you your flowers, but what, what last words would you have for our viewership? I will just say that uh, for our viewers, that we're all here for a specific reason. There's a purpose while we're here. The key though is figuring out again, and I'm gonna always just reiterate this, is figure out how can you find a vehicle to help live out that purpose. Find one, I promise you. Mark Zuckerberg became known not because he acquired all these companies, he built Facebook. Yeah. Oprah Winfrey is became she became known not because she's got all these private investments. We known her from the Oprah show. When you talk about people who leave a significant uh, impact in this world, they found the one thing that they could build to massive success. And so as a people, we got to do that. Stop being distracted because you see somebody dangling a, gar a, a golden carrot and you like, oh, let me go over there and see what they're doing. And then you you over here on this road. Now you see that you're, oh, let me go over there and do what they're doing. And then you're over here, you're over here, and you're all focused. Get laser focused on one thing. If he'll do it for one, he will do it for you. I know that for a fact. Thank you so much for having Beautiful. me. Beautiful. Everybody go to 10K book. Dot com. That's the number 10, right? Yes. Kbook.com. You can find all kind of information. Sign up for her master class. I did it. It's phenomenal. Get her damn books, y'all. Yes. Get that go get that golden hundred dollar bill, y'all. That I got it on my dry erase board. I look at it every day. Oh, These good. are her books. You guys get it. She has helped so many other publishers in this game have books, and you probably got some of their books on your bookshelf right now. That's how many people she helps. So I'm going to give you your flowers. I don't have flowers, but you know, I got the money gun. So. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much, Taria. I will talk to you soon, queen. Absolutely. Thank you, King.